Okay, good afternoon. Good, good to be out there again. Uh, we got two minutes in today. It was good to get a couple shots of that. Seems like every time you do it, there's always a unique situation that arises, and uh, we had that again today. So that was good for us. Questions? When you reviewed the film last night of the scrimmage, what's, what popped out? Uh, I think we got a, a, a really close race at quarterback, and yeah, that's exciting to me. Yeah. To see both guys out there and, and make a significant amount of plays in that scrimmage, that was really good. So I think we're probably still a couple days away. Is it a good thing that's become a tough decision? That yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. I think this is a this is a really good situation we have right now because ultimately, I don't know that I've been here a season where we haven't needed two quarterbacks. So whoever ultimately wins wins the job, is going to have an opportunity to grow in the job. But there's no guarantee that's the guy who finishes the season either. You don't have to look any further than defending national champions to know that. You've talked about only choosing one, but is there any uh, part of you that uh, may want to rethink maybe playing two for the opener? I don't have a great desire to do that. Um, I don't think, never say never. I don't want to speak in absolutes, but I, I, I don't have a desire to do that. I want to ultimately whoever is the starting quarterback, I want to give them an opportunity to play. How much will Saturday's scrimmage impact your final decision? It may get made before that. You know, so if it if it gets made before that, then it won't impact the decision because we're moving forward at that point. But if we haven't, then it certainly will, will, will weigh very heavily. So what goes in the next couple of days that would make you make a decision? I guess what would tip this guy? Is? Watching progress. You know, watching progress. So we put in something today that that we hadn't had in. The defense put in things that they hadn't shown us yet. So now we just continue to evaluate how we're handling those. Any other changes on the depth chart? Uh, Kawan Lewis, uh, we moved to, to first team. Isaiah Johnson will still take reps with the first team, but we, we thought that Kawan's performance um, dictated that. Yeah, the, the DBs, they're kind of rotating in right now, so I don't know that we've, we've, we've got a settled group right there. Speaking of the DBs, Trey, Trey Boggs, how did, I guess, last season's experience help him? Because he was still in and out of the lineup a little bit, and it says his training camp so far. Here's the, here's the biggest difference with Dre. To me, watching Dre this training camp, he's a much more physical player in the run game. He could always run, he could always cover, and he's got good hands. Th those were not an issue. Uh, but now, you know, in our system, the corners have to be involved in the run game. And, uh, and he's been very physical this training camp. I've really enjoyed watching him. Have you been impressed by how quickly he wants to move into that first uh, team role? Yeah, again, it's, it's not a starter's role yet. You know, we're not naming starters yet, but uh, am I surprised? I don't know. He's, he's, he's already played a lot on a big stage. So I don't know if I'm necessarily surprised. I'm pleased when I say that. What did you see out of him that kind of prompted you to move him up a little bit? Uh, just a performance. Uh, just a, re a really solid performance. A guy looked like he had you know, good body control in the right place at the right time. Good grasp of what we're doing. And, and now, as we continue to put in the package on defense, we'll see if he can continue that and hold on to it. What are you seeing from Robert Martin? Oh, well, first day he's been back out here in a little bit. So it was good to have him run around. Um, I think he's close. I think he's getting close to being 100%. Anything settled on the offensive line, Kyle? No, but I am. I, I'll continue to say that I'm very pleased with Dorian Miller. I, I thought he played a very strong scrimmage. I, I really like how he's moving. He's anticipating what's going on in front of him, and you know, he's, he's starting to perform like a starter. You did club ice last year. You guys doing anything fun for the players tonight or this week at all? That's why we practice every day, right? <laughs> <laughs> fun for the players. Um, we got a couple things in store during training camp. I don't want to reveal them, but you just can keep your eyes open. And you'll see a few things we got going on. Cool guessing you don't want to share what you guys were doing for the last 40 minutes? I will not share what we were doing. That's family business. <laughs> Coach, a few of the players uh, have mentioned they put on a fair amount of weight since the last game of last season, moving into this season. Longa, Agados, we've talked about in the past. Is that just a matter of them maturing and growing into their bodies? Do you guys really focus on some guys getting a little bit bigger for this season? I think it's the natural maturation process of a football player. I remember. I wasn't here when Eric Foster got here, but I remember people talking about Eric Foster coming to our program as a 215, 220-pound linebacker. And then uh, by the time he was a senior, he was a 265, 270-pound free technique. So I think it's the natural progression of a football player. Some bodies transform a little quicker than others. John Badeke is probably up 25 pounds since when he arrived in January. That is really exciting for us. And I know quite a few of the guys are, but is, is it something we focus on? We focus on it with every athlete in our program. We want every athlete in our program to be a bigger, stronger, more explosive version of what they came here as. Kyle, along those lines, how would you assess the conditioning of the, of, of the team just nine days in? I'm pleased. I, what, what I like about it is that we've been challenged. We've had some really significantly high temperatures out there on the practice field for the scrimmage. All those things harden your football team as you start training camp, and, and, and I think that's been good for us. I don't really check the advance report to see how far I'm mean, one day at a time during training camp, so we'll see how long it lasts for us. But, Especially early in training camp, I think it's really good for your football team. Along the line of player weights, I mean, Lambert and Joseph, at least to the naked eye, look like two 
two totally different sized guys, but playing the, both playing the same nose tackle position. Do they play it differently? Is there a way that's played no matter how what size you are? Uh, you, you have to play to a player's strengths, that's for sure. Now, Sebastian is a nose guard, and Quanzel is playing there at a necessity at times. So I, I think Quanzel is probably more suited to be a defensive end on either side, you know, whichever side he ends up playing. Um, we're fortunate that Quanzel is so explosive that he can go in there when we need him to. But I think most of our nose guard bodies going forward will look like Sebastian, Kevin Wilkins. It'll be more like that. You feel uh, like two more questions. You feel like Federico bounced back a little bit toward the end of that? Kyle was hot today. You know, four for four. Uh, last kick was a 50 yarder. Got the team wings tonight. So, uh, boys, they didn't seem very fired up about ice cream, so I had to go. I went with the wings to see if I get a little more excitement out of them. So, uh, Coach. I made, made sure Gilkman would get us some wings, so we'll be ready tonight. Coach, you had mentioned the heat. Uh, most of the practice is scheduled at 1245. Is that by design to make sure they experience the heat as hot as it can be during the course of the day? It's not by design in terms of trying to get to, to get the most heat. It's, it's when we put training camp together, we try to look at an optimal time of the day for, for when the players will be ready to train. So we've got a lot of stuff we do in the mornings that leads up to uh, when we practice and then things we do afterwards to make sure we're ready for tomorrow. So it's really more more focused on the optimal training time than it is what the, what the conditions will be. Thanks. Thank you.